but in 1953-54, Vale strode to the championship with 69 points, only conceding 21 goals. And a team inspired, Vale embarked upon a legendary cup run, beating Darlington, Southport, QPR and Cardiff, before drawing cup holders Blackpool at home in the fifth round. A match which saw Steele's tactical genius come to the fore. Freddie Steele played Stan Matthews off the park and he never laced a pair of football boots on. They had played him simply. They had Roy Sproson shepherding him down the wing and Stan was doing his jinking because Stan Matthews, bar none, was the finest winger that's ever laced a pair of football boots on. And they had little Dickie Cunliffe coming up behind him, running between his legs and taking the ball off him. And Stan Matthews never got a kick of the ball. And that was Freddie's planning. I mean, to play against Stan Matthews, even, even watching him to me was magic. And to play against him, I couldn't believe him, I couldn't believe him. But we absolutely made a block on that day. We took him apart. When we got the ball, we all attacked. When we hadn't got the ball, we defended. And Stan, he, he, just, he couldn't cope with Dickie Cunliffe. Because Dickie ran back and, and actually harassed him out of the game. supporters. It's a bit different than today. They applauded me all along uh, Park Road. They were brilliant, the way they were that day. And Stan had one of the worst matches he's ever had in his life. A 1-0 victory at Leighton Orient put Vale into the FA Cup semi-final. Only the second third division club ever to get there. That season, we didn't think anybody could beat us. We ju it wasn't being big headed, it was just something that had grown throughout the season. That no matter who we played, whatever league they'd been in, we were capable of beating anybody. Vale unbelievably took the lead at Villa Park. Albert Leake, the goal scorer, once again. Half time, 1 0, and Freddie Steele's luck was holding. Then disaster struck. Ray King and Tamachiri went for the ball and I think it must have caught Tommy on his shoulder uh, and went in. So it was a bit of a fluke that equaliser. And then, as everyone knows, we, we had a penalty against us with about 18 minutes to go. And uh, Tommy Tudor made a sliding tackle across outside the penalty area and I was behind that goal. And there was a groove where he scratched through. It was at least six or seven foot outside of the penalty area and the referee gave a penalty. He did foul him, there's no doubt about that, but it was nowhere near the, the box. And the unfortunate part of it was, the man who scored the penalty, and Ray King got his fingertips to it, was Ronnie Allen, our hero. With 19 minutes left, there was still time left for the veil. I remember picking the ball up, taking it through, and I slipped this ball, and Albert Lee, I don't know where he come from, and he absolutely, how he scored, I'll never know, it was a tremendous goal, never hear anybody talk about it, you know, to, uh, even, you remember the penalty, but nobody mentioned this offside goal, and Albert scored, it was a tremendous goal, and uh, the referee disallowed it. Nobody knows why the referee didn't allow the goal, but... Uh there it is, his decision was final and unfortunately the Vale never got to Wembley and I think if they had got to Wembley, I think they would have won the cup. There was a lot of tears shed that day, uh, both in the dressing room and also the fans and people back home. It was a right sad day. It was the end of the Vale's finest hour and the end of the manager's lucky talisman too. He wore black and white socks, the Port Vale socks, he wore these socks for about, well, all through the cup run. I don't think he changed them. And uh, after the game, he came in the dressing room and he, nobody's, nobody said anything. And he took his socks off. 
and it's throw them in the skip where all the dirty, you know, where the sweaty shirts and everything was, all the kit, and he threw his socks in and said a few choice words as well. Anyway, after that, he jumped, gets in the bath. And we all get changed, nobody's saying anything, I mean, you can just imagine. So we, anyway, we're all getting changed there, getting ready now for the own. Freddie comes, puts his clothes on, and he's got no socks. Well, he's got to be in the boardroom. He's got to be in the boardroom after the game. <laughs>